Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Stacy. Today I'm referencing a photo from Pixabay as an inspiration. This is an English cottage with a garden, a garden wall, other buildings in the background, and in the foreground is a roadway. Note, this canvas is being reused. Previously it had another painting on it, which was a complete flop, so I gessoed over it and we're reusing it. It's an 8 by 10 inch canvas panel. I begin by applying raw umber straight from the tube. This is in the shaded side of the building wall. Um, I will make parts of this darker by adding ultramarine blue with raw umber to form a type of chromatic black. Note, not much paint on the brush, only on the tip, so I'm making a lot of little short uh, strokes here. I been, begin laying in the bricks in the rock wall. Most of this will be disguised by the flowers from the garden, but we're putting it all in. Right now I'm just working here under the eaves of the house and just laying it in. I'm using the chiseled edge of the brush to achieve the edge of the roof line. I'm just trying to get the canvas covered. You know, we can fuss this and finesse it a little bit more later. But right now, I'm just trying to make sure I get all the canvas covered. I want a nice, good layer of raw umber on it. Eventually, this um, dark end will look like stone or rock. I like working on a flat surface, personally. I don't use an easel very often. And it just makes it easier for me when I'm working with a painting if I can just turn it to the side or whatever, you know, flip it a different way. That's looking pretty good. And this is the shady side of the cottage, which does not have any windows. This is the little rock wall that I'm going to be putting in here, or part of it, anyway. In the final painting, a lot of this rock wall is kind of covered up, but we're going to put it in anyway, because what if you don't cover it up? And here's another little piece of the rock wall, which this is a much smaller piece. Now I'm working on the dormer on the roof, and I'm just putting in the shady side of the dormer. You don't see much of the dormer in this particular picture, but it does add a little element of interest to the roof line. And right here, I'm just gonna add a layer of raw umber mixed with ultramarine blue. This is, this again, it's the shady side of the house, so you want it a little darker on this side. And I think that these were darker bricks in the picture that I have, or rocks, if you will. I'm not sure what the actual building material was. One of the tricks of painting with acrylic paints is to work in areas. And allowing one, this allows one area to dry while you work on another area. So I'll be working um, in another area shortly and that will allow this area to dry so I can come back over this later and add some more detail or uh, paint over something I don't like. For those of you who don't know me or don't know my story, I've been painting off and on most of my life, but seriously picked up the paintbrush about three and a half, four years ago and started it as a hobby. It's still a hobby. I, I do take commissions. I do enjoy painting. Um, I also enjoy doing other things like paper craft and working with polymer clay. So just about everything artistic 
not everything, but a lot of things I'm, I really like doing. I, I like doing things that are creative. Pretty soon I'll be done painting this particular part and we'll start working on another area of the painting. I'm going to mix some ultramarine blue with some titanium white and we're going to paint the sky in. There's not very much sky in this painting, just a little bit. Perhaps that'll be a subject for a future painting, how to paint sky. I like painting sky. Um, I make it darker towards the top of the painting and a little bit lighter towards the um, towards where the horizon would be. And uh, then we're also going to put in a little bit more white in fluffy strokes, if you will, to give the appearance of clouds. Even though it's not a particularly large part of the painting, it is important. So it puts your house in the right context. So here I am darkening up the sky and uh, going alongside the building that's behind my cottage here. I like painting skies. I think they're challenging and they can be the most colorful and interesting part of a painting. All right, let's flip it around and take a look at it a little bit. Oh, it definitely needs a little bit of blue over here. And we'll give it a little bit more white. Yeah, there's a, there's a fluffy cloud. Doesn't look like much, but it's there. And then you know it's there, which is always kind of nice. And where the whitest part of the cloud is, that's where the sunlight is hitting that cloud. That looks pretty good. I'm not too unpleased with it. Got to be careful not to hit the table or hit the camera because it wobbles. Okay. Oh, look at that. Looking pretty good there. Oh, I like that. That's going to look really good with that slate roof next to it. Okay, as we finish up here with the sky, we're going to start working on the dormer. The dormer colors are a combination of raw umber, thalocyanine blue, also known as thalo blue, and titanium white. This kind of gives it a greenish color. I'm using this particular combination in this particular um, amounts of uh, thalo blue and raw umber to give it kind of an underpainting, um, just covering the canvas basically. And you just got to remember not to paint over your dormer. So I'm just working on that right now. This layer um, is going to be the first layer, but we'll also have several other layers that go on top, giving it uh, some depth to the painting. Remember to use the chiseled edge of your um, bright brush. It'll give you a nice clean edge if you use it kind of on the end like that. And there's no shame in turning your painting around so it, you get a better angle for your paint. I'm very right-handed, so I have to angle things for my right hand, and I really don't like dragging my hand through wet paint. Pretty sure most people don't. Anyway, I'm just going around on the slate roof here, just trying to get it all covered. This is basically an underpainting. And if you don't like it, let it dry and you can paint over it. I'm not going to paint all of the roof because this area that I'm leaving white is for the dormer. And there's going to be a window box uh, under the window of the dormer. So there's going to be flowers coming out of it. Not to worry. It'll all get painted. After we finish covering the roof, we're going to head on to the front side of the painting. 
This is a combination of raw umber and titanium white with just a teensy weensy bit of ultramarine blue. This is the front side of the building. It has basically the same colors as the shady side with the addition of the titanium white. It needs to be lighter because this is where the sunlight is going to be coming in and hitting the face of the cottage. This is giving me the illusion of stone by varying the brush marks from up and down to sideways. And I'm using my chiseled edge of my bright brush to give me straight lines, or fairly straight lines anyway, around the windows and doors of the cottage. And here's the thing, if I make a mistake, say if I accidentally painted over a window or a door, since the paint is still wet, I can take a clean, damp brush and remove the paint. Just scoop it up off the canvas, basically, or scrub it off the canvas with my clean, damp brush. And you might have to do it a couple times to get the paint off, but as long as the paint is wet, you can do that. Or you just wait until the paint dries and paint over it. It's pretty easy medium to work with and fairly forgiving. It's not about perfection. It's about having a good time, enjoying yourself, relaxing. This is a hobby. This is something you do for fun, for enjoyment, or in my case, because you feel driven to do it. Uh, I don't know. I can't explain it. I'm just somewhat driven to paint. It can be a bit of an issue because sometimes I would rather paint than do other things that are necessary, like laundry, mowing the lawn, doing the dishes, you know, boring, mundane, daily living things. But that being said, I really do enjoy painting and I find it very relaxing. It, it's just made me feel good for several years now it's just <laughs> really good mental therapy you know it just gives you that break from all the stress of everyday life um, there's uh, an artist on YouTube called his name is Clive Powell his channel is Clive 5 art and that's his uh, saying is you know painting away the stress of everyday life and he's quite right I don't really care on this particular painting if my application of the paint is even or anything uh, for the front face of this stone house because it's a stone house. Every stone is going to be slightly different and you want to give the illusion that this is a stone house. So it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, it, and if I don't like something, I'll just wait until it's dry and paint over it. <laughs> Um, the windows and the doors of this particular house are quite deep set. So we're going to have some dark recessed areas and we're, I'll show you how I paint those. But the lighter, the, the ledge or the sill area of the windows and the step of the doors is actually going to be quite light because the sunlight will be hitting that directly. Okay. I was thinking that if you wanted a cooler look to your um, stone, you could use a monochromatic uh, scheme using Mars black and titanium white or even an ivory black, which would give you a slightly beige color. Uh, and titanium and white would be a little bit cooler. Or if you wanted to go the warmer end of the scale, you could use like unbleached titanium and burnt sienna or um, burnt umber would give you a warmer look to your stone. Of course, it's up to you. Maybe you want purple stone. Maybe you want blue stone, green stone, whatever you want to do. It's okay. It's your painting. You can make it how you like. No two people will paint the same painting the same way, even if they have the same color scheme. So it's completely individual. Right now, I'm just kind of fussing the front side of this 
um, trying to make the stone look more like stone and less like um, adobe. I was in New Mexico last year and almost every building is adobe. After a while, it's kind of strange looking to me. There's not much variety of housing styles because of the adobe push. And once in a while you see a stick frame house and you're like, wow, that's so pretty. <laughs> now I'm putting in the darker portion where the windows are recessed into the wall. I'm also going to use a liner brush to, to put this in a little bit. Some of the areas are really small. And I apologize, I'm not the best at being a videographer and I don't always get this right square in the frame. So again, I apologize. You'd think I'd get it down pat one of these days. And here I'm just going to finish up putting in the dark parts. And I apologize for being out of the scene a little bit. I'm going to fuss my, uh, my painting a little bit more with some dab dabbing. Trying to make the stone look like stone. I'm going to lighten up some of the parts on the shady side just to give it some variation and uh, but it's still going to be darker than the front side of the building. Um, do you see me using my finger tool? It's a handy tool. It's washable and you always have it available. You just got to remember not to use it with too much paint on your finger. So I'm just, again, just fussing the, the stonework a little bit here. Nothing great or grand. You can do this however you want. You could paint it like brick if you wanted to instead of stone. That would be kind of cool to have a brick building. Now here I'm just going over the darker parts again with a liner brush. And I'm using ultramarine blue and raw umber and I'm just putting another layer on there. It will help to make it the darkness that I want because this is going to be the really part of the darkest part of the painting. And these are the parts that are in the shadow. You, because the windows and the doors are recessed because of the thickness of the stone walls, they don't get the light that they would if they were closer to the front. And here's one of the doors. There's two, actually two doors and two windows on the front of this building. The other door is towards the left hand side. And now I'm putting um, the shutters on the windows. And this is a combination of Thalocyanine blue and raw umber and titanium white. It kind of gives it a faded, a little bit dirty color, if you will. I, I just think it looks really good with this particular um, painting. The, I think the original painting had um, a dark blue shutter. I don't not painting, the original photo had, I think, dark blue or green shutters. But you can make your shutters whatever color you want. You can make them purple or green or red, orange. You could put yellow ones. Yellow would look really nice. I'm also going to make the trim around the roof line this same color. And it'll be um, a lighter color on the front and darker on the shady side. But did you notice that I've done all this work down here on the lower story, but I forgot to do the dormer? Oh, talk about making work for myself. 
Hmm. It's always how it is. Now I'm starting to paint in the darkness of the windows, where the window panes are going to be. And to make the panes of the windows, I used ultramarine blue and raw umber to make the darkness. Okay, it's kind of a chromatic black, so it's plenty dark enough. I added a little, just a titch of white to it, but not very much, just enough to um, make it kind of grayish. And that's where the windows are going to be. And of course, I forgot to do the dormer above again. Uh, I make things so hard for myself. Uh, but that's how it works. You know, and I'll go back and I'll make the dormer above. And I will also do this to the doors here so that they will look recessed as well. Um, once I get the panes um, or the window put in, to make it look like there's actual glass there, I will take um, a lighter color, probably white if I remember correctly, and I will draw in the actual um, separations between the panes of glass and it will give the impression of an actual window. Right now I'm painting the where the light lands on the bottom sill of the window and the steps in front of the doors. And I'm using unbleached titanium and just a little bit of raw umber. The step, is, and that's the top of the steps, there's also going to be a rise, which is the part that goes up. So the, the top of the step is called the tread and the part that goes up is called the rise. And the rise will actually be just a little bit darker so it'll indicate that it's a little bit shaded from the by the tread. The tread will stick out a little bit and shade your um, rise. And that'll give you the illusion of steps. You can see here how I am painting the, the treads, which is where you step on the steps and the rises. It's just a little trial and error. Just keep working at it until you get it the way you want it, basically. And I'm using a liner brush because this is a really small painting, so these are really small rises and uh, treads. See? There you go. And some of that raw, that uneven edge in front of the windows and that, there's going to be plants there. So don't worry about how that looks. Now I'm doing where I'm highlighting the depth of the window. And I'm putting in the part where um, the little dividers between the panes of glass. I'm using a liner brush to do that. We'll also do it a little bit on the doors. My paint that I painted the panes with wasn't quite dry when I did this, so it was a little bit hairy. Okay, now we're going to paint the eaves. This is the same color I used for the shutters. Thalo cyanine blue, also known as thalo blue, titanium white, and raw umber. This mix, the raw umber gives it kind of tones down the thalo color, and the white, of course, makes it more opaque, and it also um, lightens it up because it's going to be on the front side of the house. On the shady side, I'll use a little less titanium white and a little bit more raw umber to make it darker. You can clean up any edges with a clean damp brush while the edges are still damp. So there we go, cleaning that up. 
Otherwise, you just wait till it dries and paint over it. And here I am going to paint the shaded side so it is just a little bit darker, not much. And right here, I'm getting ready to put some highlights on the shutters, and I'm just using short little strokes to indicate the the louvers on the shutters. Not a lot, just a little bit, just some highlights here to let you know that they're shutters. And here we're just uh, doing a little bit of touching up again on the shutters. And then I'm going to add a lintel of the same color over the door, the windows, and the other door. and just touch up that left-hand side edge, making it a little bit brighter. More of a noticeable change from the shaded side. And I'm also going to add the trim on the other side of the shady side of the roof line. And then I will add a little bit of a jagged edge to so it'll look like there's shingles on the roof. There we go. Now we're getting ready to add in some of the greenery. Woohoo! The fun part. My mixture is Hooker's Green and Ultramarine Blue. This makes a deep cool dark green for the shadows of the greenery. Now, if you don't have Hooker's Green, what could you use? Well, you could use black mixed with yellow, um, which is a large amount of yellow and very little black. Just a titch, just a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit of black will make yellow green. It makes it a nice warm olive sort of green. It's really pretty. But I wanted something cool, so I'm adding some blue to it. Now you could add thalo blue to Hooker's Green. Also makes a really nice dark, rich green. Just depends on the color you're going for. Um, I'm going to use several layers of this. The more lay with acrylic paint, layers um, add some depth to your painting. So I'm going to layer my darkest layers down first, and then we'll paint lighter layers on top. And that will give us um, the basis for all of our flowers and greenery. I like plain painting flower gardens. I just don't happen to like gardening very much myself, but I do appreciate a really pretty garden. So. This is my version of gardening, I guess, because I don't care to garden. But I appreciate other people's efforts and that other people like gardening. My biggest thing is just growing a lawn. Anyway, so I'm just gonna layer this in. It's gonna take me a little bit of doing to get this um, all covered up and in there the way I want. But you'll see in a minute or two that it's uh, it's really kind of interesting how it looks when you put it all in. And I'm doing little short upstrokes to kind of indicate grass or stems. Even though I'm going to paint most of most of this over with some flowers, you still need to have the greenery behind it. So that's what I'm doing. Now, if this was oil paint, I would recommend painting in your flowers first, or at least your flower colors, and then painting your greenery around it. Here, I'm just putting a, a bushy area in on the left-hand side of the painting. This will do two things. It acts as a stopper for the eye, so you don't go flying off the, the left-hand side. And it gives some greenery and some life to the left-hand side of the the painting. There is a building, remember, there's a building on the left-hand side just behind this greenery. So this is going to give us some depth 
because it's going to add a layer between um, between us and the painting that's kind of behind our cottage. So it'll be kind of cool. Right now I'm putting in the roof of the building that's behind the cottage. Because if I had really been thinking about this properly, I would have put the paint. <laughs> I would have painted in the roof first, but I forgot. I wasn't really, th I was so excited to be painting the greenery. Now I'm putting in another layer on our roof. And this layer is, I believe I used ultramarine blue and a lot of titanium white and a little bit of raw umber. Or maybe it's quite a bit of raw umber and a little bit of ultramarine blue. I don't know. I can't remember. Just got to mess around with it and see what you get. Now where the dormer is, that particular side of my roof is actually going to be darker than the rest of my roof. I'm going to have to put a couple layers on here to get it to look more like slate. And again, I'm using short strokes going in the direction that I want my slate tiles to go. Am I going to paint each and, and, and every individual slate? No. But it's going to appear as if maybe I did. That's the look I'm going for anyway. And here I'm trying to make it a little darker. And on the other side, I'm trying to make it a little lighter. Like I said, it's going to get several layers. It almost looks like a metal roof when I'm looking at it now, but anyway. Just um, play around with it. You know, that's how I learned things for myself is I just played around with it until I got a look that I liked. And here I'm going to darken this up because that's going to be on the shady side of the dormer. Again, it's not about perfection. If you wanted perfection, I suppose you could just take a picture of it and hang that up on your wall. But this is about a painting. Paintings are not necessarily perfect. They're created by people. And they're supposed to be, well, a painting. Now it finally dawned on me I haven't painted my dormer. fuss in the edges yet again more fuss more fuss but I want this to look like it's stone I'm trying to get it to look the way I want it to and so this front edge is going to have a little bit more but not too much because otherwise it'll look too fussed I think Can it be? Oh yeah, it's happening. Finally, my poor little dormer is getting some attention and the dark parts are getting painted in where it's recessed and it doesn't receive a whole lot of light. Also where the window panes are. It's going to look so good. Or at least I think so. I don't know, it's still early. So here we go, painting in my little window panes. Oh, looks good, looks good. Yep, that looks nice. And now the the outer portion. It's getting its little shutters. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Maybe a little too much titanium white in my shutters. Not enough thalo. All those little dabs of paint. Oh. 
starting to look pretty good, I think. Putting in the background building. And for that, for the background building, I used um, some burnt umber and unbleached titanium, I think. And I also used the same paint, the um, burnt under umber and titanium white to paint the pots um, that are under the middle window. And the shadows of the pots are darker. They don't have any or very little titanium white. And then I will paint the road. Now the road is also painted with burnt umber and titanium white and a titch of unbleached titanium. I could have used a larger brush, but no, I had to do it the hard way, of course. If it's easy, then who would want to do that? Anyway, this is the first layer of the, um, the roadway. And I'm just getting around all the edges and everything here. Yeah, f finessing it, if you will. Yes, using a larger brush to cover a, a larger area would have been helpful, says she now. And about halfway through this, I'm like a squirrel. You're a squirrel. Let's finish the building. Why not finish the road? I don't know. I don't know what makes me paint the way I do. It's just the way I paint. But don't worry. I will finish the road. I promise. See? See? Let's work on the road. I finally go, oh, yes, let's finish this. This won't take very long. And I'll add, like I said, I will add a couple layers onto this to um, finish it up and to make the road look like it's curving in front of the house. Right now it, it looks like it's just slapped up against the house. And again, I apologize for not keeping this in the frame. Oh, will I ever get the hang of this? Will I? Mm. Oh, best laid plans. I try very hard to keep it in the frame. Honest, I do. But evidently, oh, it's kind of like when I go to paint the building while I'm painting the road. Squirrel. The road is starting to come together. It's starting to look um, nicer. There we go. Yes, this looks nice. I'll turn it around so you can see it, I promise. I do a lot of promising, I noticed. But now we don't have that big blank space right there in front which that's nice. Hmm, see, that looks pretty decent. All right, another layer of the greenery and we're doing the ultramarine blue and um, hooker's green again, another layer of that. You need dark to go down first before you put your lights down because the lights are the highlighted portions and you need the darkness underneath so that they really pop. So if you don't have any ultramarine blue, say you run out, can you use other blues? Certainly. Thalo blue or thalocyanine blue is really, really user friendly. If you don't have hooker green, you can use viridian, which is a really cool green. Um, and it's, um, it's really, 
highly pigmented, I guess I would say. It, it's a deep color and you might need to cut it actually with some cad yellow to give it a warmer color. Um, and with the, with the highlighted green, I added yellow to it, cad yellow medium, and a little bit of titanium white. So that's what I make my highlighted green with. But right now we're just doing the darker greens and building up some layers to give it that depth of darkness and to give it um, kind of a wild look, you know, like it would in real life, you know, as we have layers and, and different uh, heights and uh, colors of plant life. And here I'm doing um, the sunnier bits, you know, and I'm doing really short strokes using the edge of my brush. So I'm getting more stems, I guess you would say, or even leafy parts. And again, for this part, I added a little cad yellow and a titch of titanium white to lighten it up and make it brighter. Now you can buy colors that are very similar to this, like permanent green is very similar, but it almost is like too fluorescent a green, if you will. So try out different types of greens before you even start painting. If you're unfamiliar with what your colors are going to look like, just um, take them out of the tube and make a little paint book, if you will. Um, there is a wonderful YouTube video done by Ginger Cook. It's on her channel. I'm not sure where to find it on her channel anymore. I can't remember what it's called, but she talks about how you can make like a recipe book for all your paints. So you know what your paints should and shouldn't look like and how dark they are or any of that. So go ahead and check that out. And I know you're asking yourself, oh my gosh, when is this girl going to put the flowers in? Oh my Lord. She's just fussing this and fussing this. Don't worry, they're coming, I promise. I promise, there will be flowers. There will be flowers, I promise. But right now we're just working on making the layers of this, all of this greenery. You know, we could have just left it with greenery because that's pretty interesting that way. Well, maybe not that interesting. Okay, I get it. I get it. Honest. And did I remember to put greenery in my dormer windowsill window box? No, but I will remember it eventually. Eventually. Finally, I'm going to work on the dormer. And yeah, I'm holding my hand way above all that wet paint I had just applied down below. I'm making some darker paint to go with it. Because just like down below, you need the dark so you can show the light. And look at that, we have finally covered up all the white canvas or at least most of it. Yeah, a little bit more touching up. Oh gosh. <sighs> Will she ever put flowers in? I just wonder about whether I'll put the flowers in or not. I will. I will. Eventually. Unbleached titanium on a liner brush highlights the tops of the remnant walls. Remember, there's some stone walls there. So I'm going to fuss these stone walls a little bit. Mix it with a little burnt umber. Yeah. But still, will I ever get the flowers put in? Ugh. Enough about the flowers. Let's talk about the wall. The wall is just a little bit of a remnant wall that 
obviously is holding back a, maybe a hillside or just the garden on the other side of the wall. It's kind of a unique feature. Nope, still no flowers. Ugh. But the wall looks really good, I think. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think the wall looks good? Hmm. Oh no, gotta repaint it again. Oh boy. Oh. Quit fussing the wall. That's enough. Enough, I say. Well, maybe. We'll find out. And we're going to fuss this a little bit more. Okay, that's enough. Now we get to paint flowers. I'm using a little uh, Thalo Cyanine Blue and Titanium White mix. It's not a lot of blue. Thalo Blue is a really strong color, so a little dab will do ya. And the phthalo blue with the white will give you the shaded part of white flowers. So I'm putting in my white flowers. Now my background is dry. So these are going on top of a dry background. So I don't have to worry about picking up a lot of green paint like you would if you were working with oils. And I'm just using the corner of my brush. The corner, the very corner of my bright brush is applying all these little tiny flowers. And I'm kind of clumping them all together. Kind of like how you would plant a garden. You kind of plant clumps of different types of flowers, or at least I would anyway. Even though I don't really like gardening, I have done gardening and I'm fairly good at it. Now some of my flowers are making more blue because I actually want some blue flowers in my garden. So here goes my blue flowers and these are kind of shaded so they're going to be darker in the shaded part of the garden even the blue flowers are darker. Does that make sense? I hope so. I love painting this particular type of garden um, where it's kind of wild and unkept looking. I just think it looks really cool. I also like to look at these types of gardens when I look at people's yards and that and uh, you know where they have kind of a wild and unkept look. I like that. I'm also going to put in a variety of shapes and sizes of flowers. There's also going to be a little bit of um, some yellow, just some little yellow flowers here and there. Um, that adds to the variety of the garden. Now the pure white is going to be used as kind of a highlight on some of these flowers. So here we go, just dab dabbing here. And I'm going to have my flowers go all the way down and off the canvas. Because if you were taking a picture, that's how it would look. And so, and that's how we see things too. I'm just dab dabbing some small flowers in. You know, very lightly. Some clumps here and there.
and already that's starting to make this painting really start coming to life. I'm going to add in some little yellow flowers in the very near future here. That'll add in some interest and some color for the eye candy. But right now I'm adding some white as the highlights of my white flowers where the light titanium white and thalo blue is the shadow of the white flowers. And here and there I'm going to have some white flowers, little tiny white flowers. So it'll give it some interest and some place for your eye to go. More white flowers here and there. Dab, 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 dab. Now see how they pop against the, the darkness of the greenery there? That's what I'm talking about. That gives it a lot of interest. So having that darkness of the thalo blue or the ultramarine blue with the hooker's green really makes your flowers pop, makes the color come out. Okay, I'm going to put some flowers here in the dormer. And I think I started off with some naphthol red. And um, it didn't quite look the way I wanted it to. So you're going to see me change it up a little bit. And here I just added a little bit of um, white to it, I think. And it's like, ooh, that's not the color I wanted. But I kept going, thinking, oh, well, maybe I'll just change it up. And I eventually switched to alizarin crimson. which alizarin crimson, I think, can be really a pretty color. It's not necessarily a pretty color, but it can be. Yeah. This is alizarin crimson and white. The naphthol was just too, too red for me and it doesn't make a very pretty pink. And I'm putting in some green. We need some leaves for these flowers. My poor little dormer got ignored. Now it's the center of attention. Now sometimes when you get a little carried away, you can use your rag to wipe it up. <laughs> Again, I added a little bit more green here. Now I'm adding some alizarin crimson over on the left-hand side of the painting. Again, I'm extremely right-handed, <laughs> so I will turn the painting around so I'm not dragging my hand through the paint. Now, if I was a little bit more coordinated, I guess I could use an easel and a mall stick to achieve the same effect, but I'm not that coordinated. So I'm adding the darker alizarin crimson first, and then I will add the highlights where it's alizarin crimson and uh, titanium white to bring out the highlighted blossoms. Here we go with a little bit of titanium white. 
And it's just a dab, 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 dab. My mom calls this dab dabbing my way to making a painting. Hmm, not too bad. Now right here I'm mixing up some alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue and it makes a nice purple color. If you have purple, like Diox purple or um, prism violet, a deep violet, those are all really good colors and you can use, certainly use those. Um, I wanted to make this heather-like plant look uh, some variations so I added a little bit more uh, blue to it to give it that bluer color and some of it will have more red to to give it more of that reddish purple but it's all purple and then of course I added just a titch of titanium white to make it more opaque and not so transparent Now I'm not just going to have Heather back there because that would look kind of plain and boring. Okay, I'm just mixing up a little mixture here because I'm going to brighten up the leaves in the dormer. And there we go. That's starting to look a little better. A little bit more yellow there. Yeah. And that's starting to look nice and leafy as if it's tumbling out of a window box. Very nice. And now we're going to add some white, some little tiny white dots, some more highlights here. Of just, these are gonna represent maybe that there are a bunch of little tiny, um, white blossoms of some kind, a little bit maybe like baby's breath or something of that nature. And you see how I take them all the way down to the very bottom of the painting. So like it's coming towards you. Now I'm mixing up some titanium white and cad yellow medium. The titanium white will uh, make the cad yellow more opaque and so you'll actually be able to see more of the yellow. And here it comes. And I'm just doing tiny yellow um, dots. Now, say you get a little too much of a dot, you get a big blob. We'll just take a damp, clean brush and paint it up. Just remove what you don't want. Now, if the paint has dried before you can do that, then you just wait and you have to paint over it. But if you catch it right away, you can pick it up real easy with your brush. I'm just going to add in a bunch of yellow here. And I'm going to kind of do it in little clumps like they would if they were planted in kind of a wild little garden. And again, watch this. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, I clumped it again. Ugh. So just lift it off. Lift it off. Lift it off. Try, try, try again. And there we go. It's starting to have a little bit of sparkle here. And the really light colors show up really great against the, the dark of the hooker's green and ultramarine blue. I'm also adding very, very lightly, I'm touching some of this yellow to the background where I have the purple heather 
as just something that's growing in amongst the heather. So I'm just very, very lightly touching this. And my brush is, in fact, almost dry. Now I'm going to just add in a little bit of darker purple. Just layer in a little bit of purple here and there. And in fact, I think this purple is actually quite bluish. So it has more blue than the alizarin crimson. When you're making purple, you can make purple um, using ultramarine blue and cadmium red makes a very nice purple. Alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue or even uh, thalo blue and alizarin crimson will make a purple. Or you can buy pre-made purples like dioxine purple, prism violet, deep violet, I think there's a couple other ones out there, but those are the ones that I have the most of myself. Or I've used the most often, I guess I should say. And there we go. That looks good. I'm going to turn this around so I don't put my hand in a bunch of wet paint. And we're going to just touch up these flowers a little bit to try to give them a little bit more depth. I want them to be kind of viney, if you will. I'm going to lighten that alizarin crimson up a little bit to indicate that the sunlight is falling down on the blooms. Oh, that looks much better. Maybe not perfect, but I'm not striving for perfection. I didn't want to take a photograph of it. I just wanted to paint it. Here I'm adding yellow in the flower pots. These, <laughs> you can't tell there's flower pots there anymore. They're all covered up. So I'm using, again, cad yellow mixed with titanium white to put in the flowers in the front flower pot. And I'm using a liner brush because it's very tiny. Here I'm just putting in more of the yellow flowers. One of the things you can do to make yellow flowers look deeper and much richer is you could put down a red base, like a cad red medium, uh, paint that in first, and then put cad yellow with just a little bit of titanium white added and make that the highlight and it will give your flowers like this really deep, rich orange color. Um, and yet, the because of the cad yellow, it'll make that the highlight, and it'll it'll make them definitely a yellow flower. These ones will have kind of a greenish quality because I didn't put any red or orange in them, and um, I just used the yellow with the titanium white. Now, cad yellow medium by itself is extremely transparent and um, it's hard to see otherwise. But if you put it in with titanium white, it makes it opaque. Now, right here, I'm painting in some of the viney bits. These are going to be the trailers for some of the leaves and that. And I'm using a mixture of cad yellow and um, hooker's green and titanium white to get that color. I'm trying to figure out how to paint this next part without getting my hand in it. I'm extremely right-handed. <laughs> so here I'm putting in some viney bits on the uh, bush on the left-hand side. And I think that's really kind of a cool look. You know, we've all seen these ivy-colored or 
buildings and right around the windows and doors, all the vines have been trimmed back so you can use the windows and doors. And I think that's always kind of a, a nice look. Um, you can also do that with, of course, uh, flowering bushes and such as well that are planted real close to windows and doors. And that's what I'm painting here is um, giving those viney bits a little bit of uh, just getting them around the window and the door there. And just highlight it a little bit here. And I'm also going to highlight some of the stems and leaves of the flowers um, here in the rest of the flower bed. And sometimes you know how the leaves and the grasses will grow up between the, the flowers and obscure some of the flowers, some of the blossoms. Um, that's what I'm doing here is just putting some of that in. This is just really fussing the painting. It's basically done. There's not much more to do. It's just that those fine little details that you do at the very last minute, um, you know, making the, the little leaves that, the little grasses that grow up between all your flowers and all that kind of thing. Those little fine bits of quote, realism, end quote. Even though this is not a realistic painting in a lot of ways, the perspective's a little off, you know, the colors are not perfect. It's more an impressionistic painting because if it was photorealism, I'd have spent hours and hours and we'd still be working on the stone right now. But this is just fun, pure fun. Hey, if you like my video, please subscribe. We're getting towards the tail end of this uh, particular painting. Thanks for hanging with me. I really appreciate it. If you like my video, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. You know, YouTube watches what you do. They're kind of like Big Brother. So anyway, I also put out a new video every week. And I just never know what I'm going to be doing. Sometimes it's paper craft. Sometimes it's polymer clay. Sometimes it's drawing or even a coloring book. Uh, painting. I like making junk journals. All that kind of stuff. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Bye.